I have books on Shohan on Android.com where we get hot on Android every day. Anyway, I was pretty disappointed at my Sony FDR AX33. So it is actually ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna return this. But uh, I want to still get a 4K camera, 4K camcorder, something that can record 4K so I can upgrade my YouTube channel. You're probably watching this in 1080p. Uh, but I want to get ready for 4K. By next year, everyone's going to have 4K. And, uh, you know, I wanted to get a camera that would actually have great quality videos. Um, the Sony X33 is great for stabilization. I think it's great for outdoors. Uh, it's great for home videos, vlogging and stuff like that. But uh, most of my videos I actually take at home. Um, so I need something that gets very good high quality videos uh, indoors. So I order the Panasonic uh, GH4, DMC GH4. Uh, there is Lumix G. Anyway, what's really cool about this, this is a mirrorless DSLR. Uh, but the cool thing is it can do 4K. Now, for those of you already using DSLR, uh, you probably know that most of the Canons and DS, uh, Nikons, they already uh, limited to 1080p. I think they have a 4K camcorder, uh, but it's like like $5,000 or something, uh, or $10,000 uh, for 4K DSLR, or they don't have it, or whatever. But this is probably the best way to go. I've done my research, and it seems like a lot of people who want to keep you know, having that DSLR quality uh, keep using your old lenses uh, but you want to get 4k then you can get this Panasonic GH4 uh, this is like the only mirrorless DSLR that supports 4k now what's good about this uh, it supports any micro four thirds uh, lenses uh, which means it's not gonna work with my Canon but here's the thing you can get this thing uh, called adapter uh, adapter to uh, put any of your Canon Nikon uh, all kinds of different lenses uh, connect it to this GH4 and you'll be able to use the same lenses and get that 4k recording going anyway let's go ahead and unbox this bad boy this is gonna be the new camera I'm gonna probably be using from now on for my channel so I can give you 4k uh, even if you don't have 4k monitor a lot of you have like a note 4 or an LG G3 which already can do a 1440p so that way I can up the quality of my videos and also for those of you YouTubing or making videos uh, for websites or maybe for school um, this probably interests you anyway let's go ahead and unbox this bad boy let's go ahead and do this all right guys here is the box uh, it's a nice box here as you can see uh, it says Wi-Fi certified quick time for eye holders out there uh, AVC HD uh, supports SDXC, um, so SD card, and I think that's class three. But if you want to record at full 4K, I think this one supports actually up to 200 megabits per second, um, you'll need to probably use a class 10. All right, inside the box, there is a manual and a CD case. All right, and inside the box, obviously should be the camera. All right, this I think is the camera. And let me go ahead and I'll pull out all these other accessories also. There is a shoulder mount, shoulder thingy, sorry. They're excited. And a bunch of stuff here. Uh, battery, battery charger. All right, let me put the box away. All right, let's actually take a look at the camera here. And boom shakalaka. Wow, so this is a nice little, nice little camera here. Um, compared to my 60D, it's a lot smaller, a lot lighter. Um, so I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. All right, this camera does have a flip out LCD, which I really like. All right, flips out all the way. Uh, 45 degrees this way. All right, all the way out. Uh, supports Wi-Fi and 4K. I was actually gonna get the Canon, I think, uh, 6D, which just came out, uh, which is a full crop sensor. But then again, that one doesn't have 4K, so I opted with this one. This one, I think I paid about, what, 12, 1300 bucks. Uh, there is a hot shoe here, obviously. All right, I'm just gonna leave this off. I'm gonna, probably gonna use it all the time. Uh, there is controls here, just like my Canon DSLR. And there's a bunch of buttons. 
uh, pretty similar actually. And there is a headphone, that's really nice. And also AV out, HDMI out. And also here's a slot for your uh, SD card. And I don't see a slot for a microphone. Ooh, that could be a deal breaker. Where is it? All right, maybe the headphone jack is also doubles as a microphone jack. Oh, sorry, oh, idiot. So microphone jack. Now a lot of the older Canons like I have 7D, 60D, it does have microphone jack, but it doesn't have a headphone jack. So you can't really monitor your sound while recording. And you can do it with a magic lantern and stuff. But it's good that this camera does have a dedicated um, outputs there, so very nice. All right, you'll notice there is, uh, I really like this option, a Wi-Fi LED here. Now, one thing with the Sony cameras, I noticed that uh, it doesn't really have Wi-Fi. I mean, you don't know when the Wi-Fi is on. You actually have to turn the camera on. Uh, this probably means you could probably leave the Wi-Fi on, I think. I'm not exactly sure. But there's also this remote uh, thing here. Also, uh, it's got a lot of things. And let's actually take a look at here. This is the sensor. Um, supposedly the sensor is probably smaller than my Canon, but it can do 4K. Um, so I don't know how that all works out, but it's supposed to be a pretty big sensor. I think 16 megapixel. So it should be pretty big enough. Uh, but the 4K, definitely, I can't live without. It's got a nice little viewfinder. And there's a little thing here. I'm not sure what that is. I'll find out here in a second. And you can go ahead and flip out like that. And this is a battery back here. So let's go ahead and put the battery in. Hopefully it's, I'll have to charge it. And let's turn on this bad boy. All right, turn on this bad boy. All right guys, so I finally received uh, my adapter. I also have a speed booster, this thing. Um, it's a better adapter that's coming in the mail, but uh, I ordered, this, I actually ordered a bunch of different adapters. But this is the first one I got. This one basically allows you to control aperture. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just put this in here. And I think it goes in this way. All right, uh, this is one of them I got and it fits in nice and sturdy. I'm gonna go ahead and place my Canon lens over here. And it fits in there, it doesn't really lock in. Uh, there's a little screw here. I think you're supposed to press it or something. I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. So it locks in right there. And boom shakalaka. So I've got Canon lens uh, on my Panasonic. Uh, so let me actually go ahead and do some test shoots uh, using my favorite lens. It's actually not this one. It's the one I'm recording with. Uh, it's a Sigma uh, 18 to 35 millimeter, which is f 1.8. I mean, it's super awesome. I would not buy the Panasonic lens. I've been reading reviews. The Sigma is way better, unless like you're like a beginner or something. But I'm gonna go ahead and shoot my with my favorite lens, and uh, let's see how it looks. All right. All right. This is handheld right here. In 4K. Let's go ahead and zoom out here. And I'm actually using my Canon. Or sorry, Sigma 18 to 35, my favorite lens. And I'm just gonna hold it still here. And let me go ahead and change the shutter here. Everything's manual on this controls because I'm using a Canon lens with this cheap Fotasi speed booster. I'll have the uh, the more expensive one coming next week. But this should give you a good idea. Um of the 4K abilities on this. Here's a depth of field. So I keep saying depth of focus on my last video. I don't know why. I was too excited. Looking very good. Um, again, handheld. A little jittery. Uh, but it feels pretty good in my hands. I really like it. Uh, the fact that I can use my old lenses. I heard this is a much better setup of course, everything's manual, but I'm used to doing everything manual. I prefer it that way. Um, here's it zoomed in. I love this lens. F1.8, it's just so fast. It's one of the better lenses, but it is definitely shaking. 
obvious because my hands are shaking. Uh, but I'm probably not going to have too many shots where I won't have a tripod. I will probably have a tripod. So my concern is, you know, the quality of the videos I can get even with a tripod. That's my number one thought. But I'm, I'm going to definitely try some other lenses also, see how that looks. Even though I'm using the cheaper, uh, cheaper version of the speed booster, I mean, it is pretty good, the quality you can get out of this. Uh, because my f-stop, actually 1.8 becomes uh, 0.8 almost. And I'm actually only using a shutter speed of 125 versus if I use my Canon 60 or 70, 7D, I would have to use a shutter speed probably around 30, 50. Uh, which means you can get higher quality videos in low light. So that is pretty awesome. And I'm, in, I'm just using the audio uh, microphone on the uh, GH4, but I'll probably replace it eventually. I'm going to have to replace it with my um, Sennheiser wireless microphone, which I prefer. But I got it just sitting on the table here. So definitely I do need some kind of stabilization. At wide angle, it's not going to pose such a big problem. It's going to shake a little bit. Uh, but I'm, I mean, this is definitely a lens I'm going to have to use. A, I use a tripod all the time anyways. But uh, initial test looking very good. I got nice DSLR quality nice depth of field um, something I really need to do because I primarily work with uh, phones and Android stuff hi guys now I'm doing a driving test uh, driving while holding a camera in my one hand this is what Floss Car Flossie Carter likes to do I mean this is a great test uh, of you know stability obviously I'm using a wider angle lens uh, but uh, it is fair con contest to the Sony uh, X, AX33 since you know it, that one does have wide angle lens uh, about the same I would say at uh, at uh, 11 millimeters I'm using the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter this is my favorite uh, wide angle lens if I want to get super wide I use this and we're actually going heading towards San Francisco alright guys I'm gonna get, do another test uh, testing the depth of field I mean, the depth of field is just so much better with DSLR lenses. As you can see here, I'm focusing on my uh, my caps here. Go Niners! And it looks so much better. Now I'm kind of happy. All right, we're gonna do a quick walking test here by the beach. And I'm just walking normal here. But the quality should be really good. I mean, it looks really good on my viewfinder. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at the depth of field you can get. I mean, you just, this is simply just not possible uh, with the camcorder. I mean, the kind of the angles. Hi guys, I'm gonna do a quick uh, video test uh, of my favorite food is this Tang Siu over at uh, Jajang restaurant in uh, San Francisco. And I'm used, still using my Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter uh, ISO 200 and uh, pretty low light, but I'm getting really good depth of focus and also very good, uh, very good quality. And this is all in 4K. Anyway, this is the Korean version of this is basically Korean Chinese food, all uh, my favorites. And then this is uh, champong. This is like the spicy noodles. And I have some little kimchi here. And you only playing too many games. Did you do your homework? Okay. Just playing checkers by yourself. Poor girl. Alright guys, I forgot to show you guys um, the LCD, how it works and stuff. So let me just briefly go over it. Uh, I'll probably have a full review eventually. Uh, but uh, this is the menu. It's actually touch screen. Uh, there's a bunch of menus uh, for ISO. Um, so you can go ahead and control. ISO goes from 200. Uh, I wish ISO went from 100 and higher, but uh, it goes from 200. So 200. I usually set it at 200. Since I'm using an adapter here, and uh, the, the problem with using this cheaper adapter is that uh, I can't control the aperture with the camera um, if you're using a non-Panasonic lens or non-four-thirds lens. Now, there is, they do sell this 
thing called Meta uh, Meta Bones, a speed booster, which I ordered. It's just like 600 bucks. It's expensive, but it allows you to have full control over the aperture on your lens and stuff. Anyway, it's not a huge deal. I shoot at uh, f 1.8, um, usually, or whatever it is, f 2.8 for this one. Um, so it's not a huge deal. I don't actually use higher aperture most of the time. And uh, let me go ahead and show you some of the menus here. Um, there is a menu where you can choose the recording format, uh, MP4 if you want, MOV, and also recording quality. I've got it set at uh, my favorite uh, 4K 29.97. Also, uh, you can do full 4K. I don't know why it's not showing up, but you, you're supposed to be able to do it at 24P, uh, which is a cinematic 4K. Also, this camera can do uh, 1080P at 60 frames per second at 200 megabits per second. Uh, that's that's going to be great uh, for high quality 1080P videos. So even if you don't shoot 4K, this could be the better way to go. Um, after seeing this, I might actually recommend this camera more than the Canons um, because you have the ability to shoot 4K, uh, which is the main reason I got it because some, at some time I'm gonna have to upgrade and this is the only camera that actually supports 4K. Exposure mode, um, you can have it at AS, but I have it at S because uh, my aperture is already set so I just need to change the uh, shutter speed. And there we go. Uh, there is also Wi-Fi. You can do a lot Wi-Fi um, live view through your Android, or if you're an iHoe, you can use an iPhone, uh, iPad, all that good stuff. <laughs> all right. And other than that, there's these quick menus here. You can do more stuff: multimetering, shutter speed. I mean, this camera is actually pretty awesome. I actually like it. Uh, how much? How many controls? You got this button here, this button here. I believe you can all customize. And there's actually more features on this camera than my Canon 60D or 7D or any of the newer Canons. Um, there's a headphone, like I told you. There's even a, a flash thing here. I don't know how to use that. I don't use flash much, but there's a flash thing there. Um, overall, I am very satisfied, and I did uh, some comparison videos. That will be probably my next video tomorrow, if you guys want to see it. The difference between these two cameras. And actually, you know, actually after doing that test, I've actually decided to keep both cameras. Uh, this camera is really good if you're outdoors and you're traveling. You're not, you don't want to bring your tripod, and uh, you know, you're not doing too many low light shots. I mean, this camera actually may be better because it's so stable. It's like having tripod. Um, you know, I just don't like it because the depth of field you can get the, on this camera. Uh, isn't as good as on this camera because this one you can use DSLR lens and most of my shoots are like here where I'm just kind of focusing in my subject and that's why for that I don't really like this because the lens option is just one lens but I'll just keep it because the stability is great and I'll be traveling uh, to Thailand and Korea and uh, I may carry this uh, you know where I won't, I don't want to carry my DSLR uh, or you know maybe I'm going on a boat I can't carry my all my equipment and also if I want to sh you know make a review about uh, review in 4k about a 4k camera uh, then I'll need a 4k camera so for that I may use this um, so for now I'll keep it but I'll have a full uh, comparison video tomorrow so check that out tomorrow um, that's what I was doing today but for now I'm very satisfied with my purchase and I did also get uh, this adapter and this cheap Fotasi adapter, which I, I was using in this video. And uh, they do have the more expensive Metabones. Um, this one actually does pretty good with my 18 to 35 uh, Sigma lens. It actually does uh, fairly good. There is a little bit of, of move, like one millimeter. I mean, as long as you don't touch it, it won't really affect your shots. Uh, but if you want to go serious, you definitely you do need the Metabones, and which I have it coming next week. Uh, maybe I'll have a review of it if you guys want. Um, but this one basically lowers your f-stop, and that's the greatest thing because even though uh, this has smaller sensor, with this one um, you can make your uh, f 1.8 into f 0.8, f 2.8 into 1.8. I mean, I can really see the difference. So you can actually. Uh, you may be possibly theor theoretically you can get better videos in low light. All right That said let me go ahead and show you the coolest part on this camera is actually not the video uh, the stills 
Uh, it's mirrorless and this thing shoots super fast. Let me go ahead and demonstrate this. This thing is awesome. All right, check this out. 14 frames per second, uh, 14 shots per second. Oops, what happened? Oh. All right, and also this dial is nice. It, you can press it and locks in whatever mode you're in so you don't accidentally press it. Let me go and show I mean, it just keeps going. I mean, to get that much speed, you would need something like a Canon 1D. Spend like $5,000 on the camera. But this one is faster than that. And uh, with, uh, you know, fast lens, you know, you can get some really good shots uh, with photography. So one thing this has over the camcorder is that it's obviously not a camcorder and it's, you can shoot some great photos also. So this may be a great way to go. And thanks guys for watching this video. That was my unboxing of my new Panasonic GH4. I do highly recommend this if you want to get serious about uh, videos, especially 4K, I would definitely get this. But if you're a beginner, you don't know what aperture is, if you don't know what exposure is, um, if you don't know how to work with this lens, the learning curve might be super high, you know, unless you have a lot of free time like myself. Then I would definitely still recommend the Sony 4K uh, AX33. This is the cheapest, well, not the cheapest, the lowest price camcorder you can buy. Uh, that's gonna allow you to take great videos without this learning curve and messing with it. Everything's auto. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is that the depth of field uh, isn't as great. It's nowhere near a DSLR. Uh, but for most of you shooting 4K, I mean, you can make some excellent 4K videos uh, compared to like a smartphone camera or any of those uh, point and shoot cameras. This is gonna kill it. So I'm just saying, I'm just taking into the nitty gritty uh, of it. And uh, that's why, you know, I'm gonna use this primarily, but I'm also gonna keep this. I've decided to actually keep this. This image stabilization is just awesome. Um, I was doing some tests earlier and this thing just shakes, you know, I just can't do handheld, I, I need a tripod, but this one, um, there are times when you can't carry a tripod with you, this is gonna be perfect, perfect, you know. Like on the top of an elephant, which actually happened to me, and I was carrying my DSLR, carrying a video, I actually have a video of it, uh, I put it on my YouTube, so I'll put a link to that. But when I was on top of the elephant and I had this, I could have given you some really nice 4K videos uh, from top of an elephant. So there's advantages and disadvantages of both cameras. I would recommend this uh, if you've never used a camcorder before or DSLR before. And uh, you know, if you already kind of uh, advance on it, uh, if you have one of these uh, or you, know, you wanna upgrade and you wanna really get into videography, definitely check out the GH4 uh, instead of Canon's. This one just, you know, future-proof 4K. Anyway, thanks guys for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, uh, and don't forget to leave your thoughts on these camera reviews and stuff. If you guys like more of them, I'll put it more. If you don't like more and you want more Android, I'm gonna put more Android. Uh, and uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or Google+. And as always, I stay on Android.